Hello, twin. How are you? My name is Martin, and I'm going to be your teacher today. Remember that the first part of the class will be on YouTube, and the second part will be on Zoom with your teacher. Entonces, recuerden, como todas las clases, que la primera parte de la clase se va a desarrollar acá en YouTube y la segunda parte la van a desarrollar por Zoom, cada grupo con sus profes. Ok, so, today's class is class number 7. So, let's go to your virtual classroom and I'm going to show you class number 7. So, This is class number seven. These are the two handouts that we're going to work with. And today we are also going to work with your books. Okay? So let's start with the first handout of the class, which is called Live or Leaves. Okay? So this is the first handout that we're going to do today. Okay, so this is the handout, and there is only one exercise in this handout. Okay, so let's do it. The title is Live or Lives, and I want you to pay attention here. It says Live or Lives. ¿Se acuerdan que la clase pasada hayamos visto que Dependiendo cuál era el sujeto de nuestra oración, teníamos que hacerle un pequeño cambio a nuestro sujeto. Habíamos dicho que en algunos casos teníamos que agregarle una S a nuestro verbo. ¿Se acuerdan con qué casos, con qué pronombres personales, con qué subject pronouns teníamos que agregarle una S a nuestro verbo? A ver, coméntenlo en el chat. Ok, very good. Habíamos dicho que si nuestro sujeto era he o she, íbamos a agregarle una s o también en algunos casos una es a nuestro verbo. Entonces, con esa información podemos resolver este ejercicio. And what do we have to do here? It says, underline the right verb form. So, We have to read the text and underline the correct option. Okay? So, it says, Hi, my name's Roxanne. I'm Lee Harper's sister. We, and this is an example, we live in Exeter, but our parents come or comes from Jamaica. So, what is the subject of this sentence? ¿Cuál es el sujeto de nuestra oración? Okay, it's our parents. So, what do we have to use? Come or comes? Entonces, ¿qué usamos si el sujeto es our parents? Fíjense que podríamos reemplazar este sujeto por el pronombre they. Y con el pronombre they no teníamos que agregar la S. So, the right option is come. So, our parents come from Jamaica. Very good. We like or likes music in our house. Again, pay attention to the subject of the sentence. The subject is we. And we know that we don't have to add an S if the subject is we. Entonces, como nuestro sujeto es el pronombre personal we, sabemos que no tenemos que agregar la S, entonces The right option is we like music in our house. Okay, very good. Then it says, my brother Lee 
like or likes rap again pay attention to the subject of the sentence what is the subject okay the subject is my brother Lee right and we know that we can replace this subject with the pronoun he entonces sabemos que a este sujeto lo podríamos lo podemos reemplazar por el pronombre he y, si, y sabemos que con el pronombre he tenemos que agregar una s se acuerdan la clase anterior con el handout de look que agregamos una s cuando el pronombre era he so we say my brother lee likes rap ok very good entonces la regla de agregar una s aplica tanto si usamos el pronombre como si no lo usamos también porque sabemos que igual a esto lo podríamos reemplazar por el pronombre he. Ok, very good. Then it says, my father love or loves reggae. And again, what is the subject of this sentence? Very good, it's my father. And again, we know that we can replace this subject with the pronoun he so the right option is sorry the right option is loves okay very good but my mother prefer or prefers rock music what do you think? And again, pay attention to the subject of the sentence. Entonces, para saber siempre si necesitamos o no agregar la S, tenemos que prestar atención al sujeto de nuestra oración. So in this case, the subject is my mother. And we can replace this subject with the pronoun she. Entonces sabemos que podemos reemplazar este sujeto por el pronombre she. ¿Ok? Y habíamos dicho la clase pasada que con she también teníamos que agregar una S. So, the right option is prefers. ¿Ok? Very good. So, my mother prefers rock music. I play or plays the piano. Okay, very good. I play the piano. No S this time because the subject is I and we don't have to add an S when the subject is I. Very good. So, I play the piano and I prefer Mozart. So, again, we say prefer and not prefers because the subject is I. Okay, very good. Then it says, we have got a cat. Are cats like or likes rock? Muy bien, what is the subject of this sentence? So the subject is our cat. Entonces, nuestro sujeto es our cat. ¿Y por qué pronombre podríamos reemplazar este sujeto? Ok, very good. We can replace our cat with the subject pronoun. It. Sabemos que cuando hablamos de los animales, y en, en este caso un singular, podemos reemplazar por el pronombre it. Y ahora bien, con it, 
¿Tenemos que agregar S o no tenemos que agregar S? Ok, very good. Con it también vamos a agregarle una S a nuestro verbo. Entonces, no solamente va a ser con he o con she, sino que también con it tenemos que agregarle una S a nuestro verbo. So, our cat likes, likes rock, but it hates or hates Mozart. Ok, very good. Hates. Dijimos recién que si el pronombre era it, íbamos a agregarle una S a nuestro verbo. Ok, very good. When I play or plays the piano. Ok, very good. When I play the piano. No S here because our subject is I. So, when I play the piano, it run or runs? Okay, and pay attention. Our subject is it. Nuestro sujeto es it. ¿A qué hace referencia este it? Okay, este it está haciendo referencia a our cats, a nuestro gato. So, dijimos que con it íbamos a agregarle una S. So, we say it runs and hides, very good, and hides under my bed. Do you know the meaning of this verb? Hides. If you hide, you go somewhere where people can't see you. Hide significa esconderse. Okay, so in this case, the cat hides under uh, her bed. Okay, it's funny. I love or loves it. And again, pay attention to the subject of this pronoun, of this sentence, sorry. Okay, so we say, I love, I love it. My parents always love or loves. So what is this, the subject of this sentence? The subject is my parents. And we know that we can replace this with the pronoun they. So we don't have to add an S. We say laugh. Okay, my parents always laugh. And what is the meaning of laugh? ¿Alguno sabe el significado de laugh? Ok, very good. Laugh significa reírse. So, my parents always laugh when my cat escapes. Very good. We have to add an S here because the subject is my cat. Tenemos que agregar una S porque el sujeto es my cat y sabemos que my cat podemos reemplazarlo por el pronombre It's. Entonces recuerden, como dije antes, que la regla aplica tanto si usamos el pronombre como si no usamos el pronombre. Ok, so remember that if you have any questions, please ask your teacher in the chat. Ok, and now we are going to do the second handout of the class, which is important rule. Verb or verb plus S. So, this is the handout. And pay attention because it says important rules. Es decir, reglas importantes. Y vieron cómo hacemos con los handouts que se llaman Remember. 
A este también lo vamos a resaltar. So we are going to highlight this and this as well. Y si tuvieron la posibilidad de imprimirlo, recuerden de a la hora de pegarlo en la carpeta no doblarlo. Ok, very good. Then it says verb o verb plus s. Entonces, ¿de qué vamos a hablar en este handout? Vamos a hablar de cuándo necesitamos entonces que nuestro verbo agregue o no agregue, agregue una s. So, let's take a look at this sentence. We have, she always TV in the afternoon. She always TV in the afternoon. Okay, so what do we do with TV? We... Very good. We watch TV, right? But pay attention to the subject of this sentence. The subject is she. So, since the subject of our sentence is she, we are not going to say she always watch. Entonces, como el sujeto de nuestra oración es she, en lugar de decir she always watch TV, vamos a decir she always watches TV in the afternoon. Es decir, le vamos a agregar al verbo una ES en este caso. Y no se preocupen porque vamos a estudiar después en qué casos agregamos una S solita o una ES. Entonces, nuestra regla quedaría we add, es decir, agregamos, we add, and what do we add? ¿Qué agregamos al verbo? Ok, very good. We add S o ES to the verb when the subjects are, entonces agregamos S o ES al verbo cuando los sujetos son, ¿y qué sujetos habíamos dicho? Ok, very good. He... She or it. Very good. Okay, very good. Now, let's take a look at the second sentence, this one. It says, they usually, mm -mm, when they, to the club. Okay, they usually, what? Look at the picture. What is this? They usually... Okay, very good. They usually... Swim when they... Okay, very good. When they go to the club. So, this time, no S in these two verbs. Entonces, en este caso, no agregamos ninguna S, porque nuestro sujeto, si se fijan, no es ni he, ni she, ni it. Entonces, ¿qué podemos decir? We keep the verb without, es decir, mantenemos el verbo sin y sin qué. Ok, very good, without S. Y también pueden agregar ES. When the subjects are. Sorry, sorry. When the subjects are. Entonces, ¿en qué caso no agregamos la S? ¿Con qué sujetos? Ok. When the subjects are I. You. We or they. Ok. Entonces, con I, you, we o they, al verbo lo dejamos tal cual está. No le agregamos ni S ni ES. 
Pero si nuestro sujeto es he, she o it, debemos agregarle una e, una s o una e s. Ok, so again, if you have any questions, please ask your teacher in the chat. Ok, entonces, habiendo visto esas reglas, podemos analizar los siguientes ejemplos. Let's see. I at 7 o'clock. And look at the picture. What would you write here? I. Very good. I get up at 7 o'clock. Very good. What about this one? You always your teeth in the morning. You always and pay attention to the picture here. What do you do with your teeth in the morning? You very good. You always brush your teeth in the morning. Okay. The next one, we often mm -mm, to school, we often to school and look at the picture. We have two children walking, right? So we say we often walk to school and remember the frequency adverbs. Acuérdense de los adverbios de frecuencia que iban entre el sujeto y previo al verbo. We often walk to school. And the last one, they TV in the afternoon. They TV in the afternoon. And what do you do with TV? You watch TV, right? Okay, so we say they watch TV in the afternoon. Okay, and pay attention to the subjects of these sentences. Presten atención a los sujetos de estas oraciones. We have I, you, we, and they. Entonces, nuestro verbo, si se fijan, se mantiene igual. No le agregamos una S. We have get up, brush, walk, and watch. Y como tenemos estos sujetos, al verbo lo dejamos igual sin agregarle ni S ni E S. Ok, but what happens now? We have he, his skateboards. He, his skateboards. And what do you do with our skateboards? Ok, you write a skateboards. So we say he write his skateboards. Is this ok? Ok, very good. No, this is not ok. We have to add an S here. Why? Because our subject is he. So we say he rides his skateboards. Entonces, como nuestro sujeto es he, y como dijimos antes, a nuestro verbo le teníamos que agregar una S. Ok, what about this one? She, the violin. She, the violin. Ok, she play the violin. But, is this ok? Ok, no. Again, our subject is she, so we have to add an S. She plays the violin. Entonces, como nuestro sujeto es she, al verbo le agregamos una S. Ok, and the last example, it always on the cushion. And look at the picture. This is a cushion. Cushion means almohadón. 
it always on the cushion. And what is the cat doing? Okay, very good. So we say it always sleep. Okay, no. What do we say? It always sleeps on the cushion. Why? Because our subject is it. Entonces, ¿cómo tenemos nuestros sujetos he, she, or it? Al verbo le vamos a agregar una s. Okay? Again, if you have questions, please ask your teacher in the chat. Okay, and now we are going to work with your books. So, we are going to work with pages 40 and 41. Let's start uh, with page 40. So, this is page 40. And look, we have already listened to this story. Entonces, en la página 40, tenemos una historia que nosotros ya escuchamos anteriormente cuando habíamos visto el tema de la hora. What are we going to do? We are going to listen to this story again. And now, we are going to pay attention to the verbs in the story. Entonces, vamos a escuchar esta historia de vuelta. Y esta vez vamos a prestar atención a los verbos en la historia. Y vamos a ver si... Agregan o no agregan ese dependiendo el sujeto de, de la oración. ¿Ok? ¿Estás listo? Vamos a hacerlo. Page 40. Page 40. Exercise 1. Listen and read. Every school day is the same. up at seven o'clock. Oh, go away, Gemma. <laughs> Come on, Phoenix. Get up. We have breakfast at eight o'clock. I eat cereal. Phoenix, that's disgusting. Then we walk to school. Gemma goes home, but I meet my friends. We have dinner at seven o'clock. At eight o'clock, I watch TV. Gemma studies. Go! Be next. I go to bed at nine o'clock. Good night, Felix. Night, Mum. Okay. Espero entonces que hayan podido prestar atención al uso de los verbos, a cómo los verbos están conjugados en la historia. Ok, and now we are going to work on page 41. So, page 41, and we are going to pay attention to this grammar box here. Ok, entonces vamos a prestar atención a este cuadro que tenemos acá, que más que nada es un resumen de lo que estuvimos hablando hoy. So, we have I get up at 7 o'clock or you watch TV at 7 o'clock. We study at 7 o'clock. They have breakfast at 7 o'clock. O cualquier oración que también pueden armar. Entonces, con los pronombres I, you, we o they, Dijimos que el verbo no agregaba S. But what happens if the subject is he, she or it? We say he gets up at 7 o'clock. She watches TV at 7 o'clock. It studies or he has breakfast. So... In this case, we have to add 
S o ES sometimes. Entonces, habíamos dicho que con los pronombres he, she o it, íbamos a agregar una S o una ES. And pay attention, because there is one exception. Tenemos una excepción, que ustedes ya la conocen igual. Fíjense, acá dice has breakfast. El verbo have breakfast. Con he, con she o con it, no vamos a decir has breakfast. ¿Sí? No agregamos una S a la palabra have, sino que cambiamos directamente la palabra have por has. ¿Ok? Como cuando decíamos have got o has got. Ok, very good. And the last thing is, let's pay attention to this watch out here. We have the words breakfast, lunch, dinner, cereal, chips, etc. And with these words, con estas palabras, vamos a usar los verbos have o eat. So we say have breakfast or have lunch or have dinner, eat cereal or eat chips. Okay? So, if you have any questions, please ask your teacher in the chat. Okay, and now let's go back to the virtual classroom. So, for homework, you'll have to do these handouts. Entonces, de tarea van a llevar este handout que se llama I eat, but she eats. Okay, and you're going to do online practice. Van a llevar también tarea online. Y van a llevar también un juego para que ustedes puedan practicar la hora. Muy bien, además, antes de irnos a Zoom, quería decirles que vayan estudiando, vayan empezando a estudiar, porque dentro de poco vamos a tener un Short Listening Assessment. ¿Ok? Vamos a tener como un pequeño, una pequeña prueba de listening en pocas clases. Ok, ahora sí, seguimos la clase por Zoom.